Hi everybody, my name is Justin and I'm the Product Manager for Asia for Evergreen Tours. Uh, thank you for attending our webinar today and hopefully we'll be able to fill you up with all the information you need to make a decision about your next Asia holiday and um, also give you a bit of information about Evergreen Tours and who we are and what we do. So the product, being the Product Manager, I put together the itineraries and the brochures for the so a bit of an enviable job and it is a good one. So hopefully I've put together something that um, is to your liking and to your taste and uh, we can see you on board one of our tours soon. So we're going to run through a few things today. Uh, we'll run through basically the history of Evergreen Tours and who we are. And then I'll run you through the elements of our tours and, and how we put together the tours in Asia and what the main elements are, uh, the main aspects of each tour, as well as giving you an introduction to Asia about the geography and, and where everything sits and uh, what the main highlights are. We'll then run through some itineraries and all the, the places that we visit on the tour and give you some uh, insight and ideas of the things that we'll be doing on tour and then run through some of the deals associated with our tours for 2016 and 17. Asia is a, a pretty amazing place, as I'm sure a lot of you would already know. It has so much to offer, a lot of culture and history, great food and shopping, and uh, there are so many different things to see and do. Um, one of my favourite memories is tracing through the jungle around Siem Reap and seeing some of the outer lying temples of, of Angkor Wat. Some, it's a little bit like Indiana Jones out there. Um, there are still signs on the side of the trails saying don't go off the trail because there's landmines still around and there's jungle overgrowing these temples that make it very intrepid and, and quite an adventure but um, it's really such a sight to go out into these amazing places, the thick jungle and, and see such uh, ancient structures so these are the types of things that we can bring you on board an Evergreen to, to Asia. So for Green and who we are, just to give you a bit of an idea in case um, some of you are unfamiliar about the company and what we've done. So we were started in 1980 and it was started in Victoria and we were operating tours to Tasmania and other parts of Australia. The first brochure that we had had a picture of a little scratch and sniff picture. I don't know if you remember those stickers where you used to scratch them and it was a, an apple one obviously to represent the apple aisle so um, obviously very innovative for it today. And um, we then moved on throughout the time and in 1998 Scenic Tours purchased Evergreen and this opened up more destinations for us, gave us more scope and also more buying power and um, being able to pass on that greater value to our clients as well. So it was a big expansion for us around this time. And so in 2000, we expanded to New Zealand, touring throughout Canada and Alaska. And this became our most sex successful touring destination. And we became one of the most um, prominent touring companies to the destination. Uh, for 2015, we sent a record number of travellers to Canada and also our customer satisfaction rating there is about 95%. So we're uh, very pleased with the way things are going over there and we're still going very strong. Throughout the time our, we were sending passengers uh, in, in, in numbers to Australia, New Zealand, uh, Canada and Alaska and obviously we needed to expand and our passengers were telling us that uh, European river cruising was what they wanted to do next. So listening to our clients, we decided to charter ships on the European rivers and in 2008 we expanded our product further again to encompass river cruising and charters in, in Europe. In 2010 we expanded further going to South America, um, again listening to our passengers <coughs> people wanting to go further afield and explore this amazing continent that has such incredible diversity. Uh, we launched that product and it has grown into our third biggest product now throughout the company. So 
becoming a very popular destination in South America. A really significant time in the history of Evergreen Tours was last year in 2014. The owner of Scenic and Evergreen Tours, he is an avid shipbuilder and he decided to launch uh, a second brand besides Scenic on, on the Europe's waterways and uh, launch at the Emerald Starships. So Emerald Waterways was launched and two starships were built. Just immediately won Cruise Critics Best New River Ships Award, which we're very proud of. In this year, we also started USA Coach Touring as well throughout the, the United States of America. This year, 2015, we've built another two starships, so that gives us four starships. So uh, these are some of the most innovative ships on the on the European rivers and something that we're very proud of and that's bringing back um, very high satisfaction ratings uh, from our guests. We are building another Starship in 2016, which will give us our fifth Starship on the waters, which we're uh, obviously going to be very proud of, and, and that just shows you the demand for the rivers and also for these uh, Emerald Waterways Starships that are some of the most luxurious uh, on the waters. And then obviously bringing, bringing us to why we're here today, in 2016 we're launching our Southeast Asia river cruising on, on board the Mekong Navigator. So this is again a new destination for us and another expansion that we're very proud of. Uh, we've partnered up with the Mekong Navigator that you can see on your screen. It's one of the newest and most luxurious vessels on the water taking us through the Mekong Delta. So that just gives you a little bit of an idea about Evergreen Tours and who we are and where we came from and that we're a very well established operator and we've been touring for a while and, and been taking this successful pattern of touring around the globe. So Evergreen Tours uh, and the inclusions and in specifically with uh, Southeast Asia. We're a 100% Australian owned and operated company, so uh, the, the owner of the company, Glenn Moroni, who owns both Scenic and Evergreen, is still in charge of the company and operates everything himself. We are a premium worldwide guided touring specialist uh, and we have cruise directors and tour directors accompany you throughout your tour and local guides as well for uh, local insights as you travel throughout your tour. So that means that we are generally a four star plus all inclusive service and tour operator. Uh, leading on from that we include all the tipping and gratuities, port charges and taxes so you're not having to put your hand in your pocket when you travel. The only thing really left for you to pay is a few additional meals and your souvenirs and drinks. We use deluxe hotels throughout, so as I mentioned before, generally four star plus and we make a, an effort to make sure they're centrally located so you're not having to get taxis into the middle of town to, to find your way around. Uh, everything is usually within walking distance of all of our hotels. We make sure and that we have itineraries that obviously flow well. Uh, I've worked in Asia specialist operators. I've been to Vietnam and Cambodia. Uh, at least five times. So I've travelled throughout both countries quite extensively, both on personal travel and on work travel. So I've made sure that I've included all of the, uh, the must-sees in, in the itineraries as well as some nice hidden treasures as well. We include all the transport throughout the itinerary and that includes the internal flight. So if you're, if you're doing one of the longer itineraries then uh, you don't have to think about buying any additional transport or flights. We include most meals and what that means is that we have a full breakfast daily for you, which is usually a buffet breakfast. And then we occasionally include a lunch uh, here and there throughout the itinerary to uh, when it's worthwhile or when it's a highlight. And we include most dinners. So if there's a two, two nights a dinner on one of those nights and then if it's a one night stay, we'll usually include a dinner as well. So uh, there are a few meals left to your own devices so you get out there and explore the cuisine yourself but most meals are included and that includes the tipping uh, with the meals. And I touched on this before, we have carefully planned itineraries so we make sure that um, each day is filled with, with uh, the main sites and attractions that you have 
your guides to show you around and all the transport and that it flows well uh, throughout the day and throughout the itinerary. Uh, we leave some time throughout your itinerary also for independent exploration. Uh, occasionally here and there we'll have a half day or a day free uh, just so you can relax and unwind or do some additional sightseeing. And then we have the same seamless operations as scenic tours. So uh, this is a pretty important one because scenic is one of the top luxury brands in Australia and the clients obviously demand nothing but the best. So Evergreen benefits from that, making sure that we use the same on the ground operations, the same people running the tours and familiar with the delivery and the expectation of the clients of Scenic. So uh, Evergreen has the same seamless delivery as Scenic. So just to give you a bit of an idea of Vietnam and Cambodia, just uh, to put it in perspective of where they lie and where they are and, and what we're going to see. So as you can see, it's uh, relatively close and as everyone knows, it's relatively close to Australia, just a hop, skip and a jump. We generally try and use uh, Singapore Airlines, so going via Singapore and then into Vietnam or Cambodia. The flights uh, depends on your city of departure. Um, obviously the time taken to get to Singapore and then the, the amount of time stopping over in Singapore uh, connecting between your connecting flights. I think generally it's between 10 and 15 hours um, to get over to Vietnam. So uh, on the right it gives you a bit of an idea of each country that we visit and uh, the surrounding countries also. So it just gives you a bit of an um, orientation of, of where everything lies and, and how it is. So as you can see it's surrounded by China and uh, Myanmar and Thailand. And it's a long skinny country running from north to south. That's the direction that we run our tours in. So as you up in the north you can see Hanoi. That's the capital of Vietnam. And north of there you can see a little um, town called Sapa. So that's the hill tribe area where you're going to get a lot of ec ethnic minority groups. Extension package running up there. You have Ha Long Bay out to the right of Hanoi. So that's where the um, beautiful um, limestone cliffs and emerald waters are where we do a cruise. Then about halfway down the country we have Hue and Hoi An, um, imperial capitals, very historic cities. And then down in the south is Ho Chi Minh City and then you can see just below that which is the start of the Mekong Delta. Cha Doc is the border. You can see on the border of Vietnam and Cambodia where we cross going into, so we travel up the Mekong Delta and into Cambodia. We visit Phnom Penh which is the capital and then cruise further upstream into Siem Reap. So that's the how our itinerary flows. Laos is north of Cambodia and we have an extension package to Luang Prabang which is a UNESCO World Heritage Town, very relaxed, surrounded by jungle, a lot of temples and history there as well, a very beautiful town. So a great extension there too. So just to give you a bit of an idea of the highlights and the main things that you'll be wanting to see when you visit this area of the world, that is from our clients and the people that have travelled the, the world, Long Bay, as you can see in the image here, it is a, a gorgeous area. Uh, Emerald Waters, the, the, the good thing about Ha Long Bay is that the images um, generally don't lie. The, the waters are this beautiful emerald colour and they're surrounded by these um, dramatic cliffs that are covered by uh, green vegetation. There's also a rich culture there, obviously a, a very strong fishing culture and, and a lot of little floating houses and villages around there, so it's very interesting. And we travel on board the Baia cruise throughout Ha Long Bay. Uh, Hue, I mentioned before, is an old imperial capital, so an ancient capital of Vietnam. And as you can see, it has these um, incredible architecture and uh, amazing history and culture. Hoi An as well uh, is, a, is a historic port town so it has a lot of influence from all over the world. Um, it has a great walking um, a pedestrian area, great to, to find your way around on foot. Um, has a beautiful beach and a, a great um, central area as well. Then down south 
we go through Ho Chi Minh City and then going to visit the Coochie Tunnels is a highlight as well and, and something that's on most people's bucket list. Uh, we don't make you go down the tunnels like uh, the, the, the man in the image on the bottom right here. Uh, it is, uh, can be a little bit claustrophobic, but if, if you are so inclined, you can go down and have an adventure down through the network of tunnels down there. So these are obviously the, the tunnels built by the Viet Cong throughout the Vietnam War. Amazing story there. And just Outside. We have the Mekong Delta, so I, I mentioned this before, it's a, a, a maze of waterways and, and a place that supports life uh, and that moves to the rhythm of the rivers down there and it has, uh, it's a very busy place that is very rich in, in Vietnamese and Cambodian culture and we cruise the, the Mekong Delta and up the Mekong River into Cambodia and finish at Angkor Wat which is really the icing on the, on the cake or the diamond in the crown. Uh, it's an absolutely magnificent structure as you can see in the image here and it will really make your jaw drop when you see it. It's one of those places that really does, um, is, is one of the highlights of the tour. So that just gives you a bit of an idea, a bit of an introduction of the region of Vietnam and Cambodia and what you're going to see and do and some of the highlights that we're going to, to take you to while traveling with Evergreen Tours throughout the region. So some of the uh, we have while traveling with Evergreen Tours, we call them our Your Invited Inclusions. So what these are are special inclusions where we try and immerse you in the local culture and get you involved in the local people's lives. We have these interspersed throughout the itinerary every few days um, to make sure that you're getting the most out of the, uh, the place that you're visiting and you have a lot of cultural interaction. It's really about meeting the local people and being invited into their lives and, and uh, a lot of them are exclusive to Evergreen Tours. So um, these are examples of these uh, things like uh, Far A Circus in Siem Reap. So this is a, a, a company that gets uh, underprivileged um, youth and teaches them performing arts, uh, dresses them up in traditional costume and um, has this amazing circus of very talented um, kids. Farewell on our final night as a, as a farewell, we, we have a, a local dinner and then take you to Faray Circus. Um, also in Hanoi, at the start of your itinerary, we go to we have lunch at Koto Restaurant. So Koto stands for No One Teach One, and it was started by this man in the image here called Jimmy Pham, and he's an Australian Vietnamese. And what he did, he he went over there and he he um, found some uh, well when he was over there. He saw that there were a lot of street kids in Hanoi and, and he devised a way to help them. So he, he brought skilled professionals from Australia and other parts of the world over to Vietnam to teach them hospitality skills and he started up um, his own restaurants and now these street kids work in his restaurants and, and serve up some amazing uh, local cuisine. They also work through some of the, uh, the best hotels in Vietnam so it's been a, a quite a success and, and it's a great, uh, great story. And, and and uh, down in the session before uh, we visit, but we do it with a Vietnam veteran. So one of the uh, Vietnamese locals will uh, meet you at the tunnels and give you an introduction and tell you about their personal experiences down there. So these are some of the examples of our your invited experiences throughout the itinerary to show you how to uh, how we enrich the your time there. In Hanoi, again, we have uh, a water puppet show, which is a traditional show. Uh, it's been going since uh, for about a thousand years, so a very rich um, history for the water puppets. And, and after the show, we make sure that you go backstage and meet the actual performers. Uh, in Hue, we take you by rickshaw, which is obviously a traditional mode of transport. So traveling to the old town in Hue by rickshaw, uh, a nice local way to travel. And the Start Foundation. So again, this is something where uh, a company has, has got together and found um, underprivileged families and, and, and families that are struggling to find, uh, people that are struggling to find employment. And they've taught, taught them um, traditional, traditional arts and crafts. Uh, in Hoi An, uh, you'll see uh, lines throughout all the streets, especially at night, it's quite beautiful, all these lanterns, these traditional lanterns. So we, we go to 
the Life Start Foundation and they teach you lantern making and traditional Vietnamese painting and you interact with the people um, who teach these arts and who have learnt these uh, these arts, traditional arts. So, and then at the end of it, you get to obviously take away a little souvenir of um, you know either a lantern or a painting after you go. So, some really nice, unique inclusions there to enhance your itinerary and give you a real taste, being able to meet the locals and, and uh, make a difference into their lives. So, the Mekong Delta. Uh, this is obviously going to be a big part of, of the itinerary. If you choose, uh, most of the itineraries feature the Mekong Cruise. So as I, as I said before, it's, it departs from just south of Saigon and travels all the way up towards Siem Reap in Cambodia. And the Mekong Delta and the Mekong River is a hub of life and culture in Vietnam and Cambodia. It's uh, a waterway that, that drenches the land and is obviously going to create a great place for agriculture. So um, this area produces um, some of the most, um, most of the food for the region and, and a lot of food that's exported as well. So there's a lot of floating markets, there's little villages, um, images like these with, with vendors selling from their boats and um, people working the fields, very friendly people that, that sort of move with the rhythm of the rivers down there. The, the Cruise, um, there are a lot of cultural performances and, and visits to cultural landmarks as well. So, to making sure you make the most of this this amazing region. So, to give you a bit of an idea of how we travel along the Mekong, uh, we do it in style and on one of the most luxurious and opulent vessels, sailing the waters. It is the Mekong Navigator, and um, as you can see from these images, it's built in a beautiful French colonial style with, with still a lot of modern enhancements. So we take a seven night cruise upstream. Um, as I mentioned before, it starts in Mi Te and finishes in Kampong Cham, which is close to Siem Reap. So we transfer you down from Saigon to Mi Te. We jump on the boat and travel upstream for seven nights, finishing Kampong Cham. And from there, it's about a further up to Siem Reap. The reason we don't sail right up to Siem Reap is the water levels. Uh, it's almost impossible to get up there um, across the Tom, um, up the Tomlay Sap River. Um, the tributary leading into the river is often uh, too low to get in there. So the Mekong Navigator is a specially custom built ship by a company called Highmark Travel and they specialize in building five star luxury ships that um, very much reflect the region that they're in. Um, there was a lot of French influence, obviously, uh, back in the day, and this vessel reflects that French colonial style. It was launched in September 2014, and so it's one of the newest and most luxurious vessels sailing the rivers. On board, it features restaurants, land, our room, library, and in all the cabins. So there's an extensive array of facilities on board, uh, 35 crew, and as you can see, it's a beautiful, opulent style of cruising. So in regards to the cabins, there are 34 cabins. So the maximum amount of passengers that can be held is uh, 68 passengers. And there are 35 crews, so it's quite a good staff to passenger ratio. This consists of four superior suites, 10 Vista suites, 16 signature suites, two prestige suites, and two grand suites. So I'll run through all of these in a second so that you can see images and, and get a better idea of what they all look like. They all have French balconies except for the superior suites which are the lead in and they have large portholes. They all have an LCD TV with on-demand movies, a mini bar, safe, air conditioning and daily bottled water that's replenished a couple of times a day. So these are the superior suites. As you can see there's an, an image there as well as the, um, the cabin plan. For a lead-in cabin, uh, they're quite spacious. They're 24 metres squared or 250, 256 feet squared. 
and they have uh, two oversized portholes. They're on the bottom deck, which is the Jasmine deck, and on that deck are the, the uh, four cabins only. Um, they consist of either two beds or one queen bed, and they have a, a luxurious marble, uh, marble bathroom. And as you can see, um, a chair and writing desk and uh, a wall. The next step up on the next deck, which is called the Lotus Deck, are the 10 Vista Suites. So as you can see, these are a little bit more spacious, but only, only just. And the reason they are more spacious is generally because of the French balcony. As you can see there, uh, these, these suites feature a French balcony. They're 26 metres squared or 276 feet squared and have the glass uh, floor to ceiling uh, doors and windows. Uh, everything else is very similar to the superior suites um, with the marble bathroom and the twin or queen beds. Um, basically a larger cabin, this is a larger cabin with a French balcony and located um, upper deck on the Lotus deck. The next step up are the signature suites. So there's 16 of these. And again, they're a step up on, on what's called the, the orchid deck or what is the upper deck of the boat. So again, these are a bit larger. Um, so we're looking at uh, 29 metres squared. And as you can see, they feature a large balcony. So the main, the main difference is being up on the lotus deck, sorry, on the orchid deck, and also featuring a large private balcony with the patio furniture. Again, they'll have either a queen bed or two single beds uh, with the marble bathroom. So these are getting to the top suites in the ship. So the Prestige suites are also located on the orchid deck, which is the upper deck, and they're there. So as you can see, they feature a large bathroom, quite luxurious, with a bath and um, a marble vanity. They're very large, 36 metres squared, and also have the large balcony with the um, floor-to-ceiling French doors. One of the big differences with these cabins are we include all minibar consumption, and we provide also a one-hour spa treatment. You get daily laundry, which is unlimited throughout your, throughout your cruise. And we also feature in-evening canapes served to your suite. So that's available on the Prestige Suites and also on, on the next cabin up, which is the, the Grand Suites. So this image is of the Grand Suite. As you can see, it's a very large around balcony. Heaps of space, including in the bathroom, a very opulent and luxurious, spacious area. It's 54 metres squared, so um, is bigger than some apartments, and is the top cabin, cabin category on the ship. So it's also on the orchid de deck, which is the upper deck, and located at the front of the ship. So getting the best views as well. Um, it features a king bed, so this can't be split into a twin and has a very spacious area with sofas and writing desks. Um, obviously the marble bathroom, a spa bath and shower. Um, and again, the mini bar consumption, the spa treatments, the daily laundry and in-suite canopy, canopies also provided with the grand suite. So that gives you an idea of all the the tour price in the brochure is based on the superior suite and then we have upgrade prices um, as you go up in category. So what's included on board? Uh, pretty much everything. Every day is filled with activities. We have local guides and, and transport to take you around. Um, you will be taken by boats on some of the tours or um, taken onto the land and tour by, by 
either minivan or, or mini coach around with your local guides. So on board we have our own Evergreen, dedicated Evergreen cruise director. It includes private transfers from Saigon and Siem Reap. Every day we'll be taken on excursions, taken to off the ship, um, as I said, via boat or, or via um, coach or van and visit a variety of places, it, from floating markets to villages to um, mat weaving um, uh, families and um, all sorts of different things. Also on board there, there's a variety of entertainment. So we have um, an Apsara dance, which is a traditional Cambodian dance, or also the Cambodians uh, Children's Choir comes on board, and also they do shadow puppetry, which is a traditional Cambodian art form. So some very interesting and um, cultural interaction while on board also. All meals are included while on board, and there's a selection of either Asian or Western foods to cater for um, a variety of tastes. Alcoholic and non-alcoholic drinks are served on board, um, so that includes local beer and spirits at any time on the cruise and imported wine with lunch and dinner only. We feature a welcome and farewell reception, so when you come on board there's a, a welcome by the, the crew, um, a little bit, bit of a champagne toast before, before we set off and then um, a farewell reception also. As mentioned before, all tipping and taxes are included, so there's nothing more to pay while on board. So throughout your cruise, you'll be taken on various sightseeing excursions, as I mentioned before. So when we, we reach Phnom Penh, we get off and we, we get jump on board one of the, uh, on, on the Cyclos and travel throughout the town and get taken to the Grand Palace. Um, we also get taken to the Killing Fields, which are a, a bit of a gruesome reminder of the recent past of the Pol Pot regime of the Khmer Rouge. And then as we travel throughout, we go to floating markets, um, to temples for a Buddhist blessing. Um, so a variety of excursions and cultural performance as we travel throughout the, the Mekong River. So the and, and what you're going to get on board and what you're going to see and do. So as you'll, as you'll agree, it's a, an incredible cruise that not only travels in style but also gets you into one of the most uh, rich and cultural areas of Vietnam and allows you to interact and see some amazing sights. So also travelling throughout, uh, the, the, uh, throughout Vietnam and Cambodia, obviously we do have some land touring attached to the cruise and uh, the hotels are an important part of that land touring. So we make sure that we choose our hotels based on their location and obviously their quality and comfort. We make sure that all of our hotels are centrally located in, throughout all the cities that we visit so that you can hop out of your hotel and walk uh, to all the main sites and attractions and uh, are surrounded by restaurants and bars, shops, uh, pharmacies, that sort of thing. So you don't have to go far or get taxis around. I'm going from these images, we have a variety of, of accommodation and we make sure that they're all of the four star plus standard. Um, some of the examples here in the top right is Shintamani Resort in, in Siem Reap. It's a four and a half to five star resort. Um, it's in the bottom right is the Silk Path Hotel which we use in Hanoi located right close to the, the old quarter or the um, Best Western Premier Indochine Palace in the main image there is uh, a new four and a half star hotel located in Hue. So some, a variety of accommodation from boutique to modern, uh, but always charming and unique. Now the last main element that goes into making up the tours and which is such an important part of Asia is the food. I'm sure everyone's familiar with the cuisine that comes out of this region and the herbs and spices used to, to put it all together. So I've already mentioned a couple of the highlight meals, but we, we make sure that we um, pepper your, your itinerary with uh, very special meals that have a local, uh, a local flavor um, according to the region that you're traveling in. And also, we also combine it with performances or with special 
um, companies or organizations such as Koto to make sure that the dining experiences, experiences are enhanced and you're getting the most out of the region while, while visiting. So next I'll run you through our itineraries to give you a, a few samples of what we do and uh, what you can choose to do throughout Vietnam and Cambodia with Evergreen. And I'll also run you through the cities that we visit so that you get um, a familiarity with, with uh, where we go and what we do and also different and what to expect. So this is our 19 day Vietnam and Cambodia Explorer and Mekong cruise. So this is our longest itinerary that features basically everything that you would uh, really want to do, all of the highlights of Vietnam. So starting up north in Hanoi with two nights there, driving out to Ha Long Bay and doing a cruise there before flying down to Da Nang and spending three nights in Hoi An. We then go up to Hue for a night before flying down to Ho Chi Minh City. Then we go down to the Mekong Delta and board the cruise for seven nights before finishing in Siem Reap with two nights. So as you can see, it's mostly two and three night stays, so quite a, a nice paced, a well paced itinerary. And it visits all the highlights of um, that I've mentioned before. So I'll, I'll run through that I just mentioned so you can see um, what you would like to, or what appeals to you and what doesn't. Uh, so Hanoi is the capital of Vietnam and it has, it's a, a rich French colonial town uh, surrounded by a lot of lakes um, and it's quite, quite green and quite fertile. There's a lot of traditional architecture, a lot of uh, temples and our sightseeing there visits uh, Ho Chi Minh's mausoleum. So Ho Chi Minh is, is like the, the grandfather of, of Vietnam. Uh, he lived up in Hanoi, so he's um, interned there. Uh, we also see his former home. Uh, we see some, some different temples and visit some different schools. Um, one of them is the Temple of Literature, where they um, is a historic university uh, that's been around, which was one of the original places of education for the elite and the royal. Quarter, which is the bustling area where you're going to see so many different things being sold in each section. You know, you might see brooms in one section, then pots in one section, and then uh, food in another. So it's a, a really interesting uh, little walking area. And then the central area is Hong Kiem Lake, which is uh, what you see in the image on the top there um, with the, the lovely temple in the middle of the lake. So we stay at the Silk Path Hotel, as I mentioned before, in Hanoi. So in the image here on the left-hand side, that's the, the lobby. As you can see, it's a nice four-star hotel located near the old quarter within walking distance. So a great location and a nice offering there. Uh, as I mentioned before, we have lunch at Koto, which is uh, the restaurant that has the underprivileged uh, kids that have been educated in, in hospitality and now run these so there, um, and then finally, our other your invited experience is meeting, uh, having a water puppet show, and meeting the puppeteers. We then travel out to Ha Long Bay for a night, and we jump on board the cruises, which are Bayer Cruises, which are uh, known as one of the most luxurious cruise companies in Ha Long Bay. As you can see here, uh, an image of the ship and the cabins. And as I mentioned, Ha Long Bay is one of those areas where uh, literally your jaw drops when you get there. It's, it's stunningly beautiful. Um, cast limestone outcrops coming out of this emerald water with uh, amazing vegetation covering it. So you, it's a very relaxing place where you just um, sit on board, visit different little villages, see how they live their lives. There's caves and beaches, um, different little towns, and, and so. Um, a great two days spent in Ha Long Bay. We then fly down to Hoi An and spend three nights there. So Hoi An is one of those towns that um, is great for, for travellers. It has a lot to offer from history and culture to modern restaurants and bars. 
um, great uh, little ceremonies and, and traditions throughout the town. It's great for walking. There's a, a, an old quarter which uh, is, is easy to walk to. Our hotel is the Hoi An Historic Hotel which is located steps from the old quarter, so one of the most centrally located hotels. So it's, it's a great place to, to have in the middle of the itinerary and to, to stop and relax, take it all in for a while. So we do a walking tour there. We, we walk through the historic town and the old quarter, see some of the architecture such as the bridge and some of the old merchants' homes and the Chinese Assembly Hall. And then as a Your Invited experiences, we visit the Lifestart Foundation that I mentioned before that, that um, meets some of the local people who specialise in, in um, traditional arts and crafts and we can join them in making lanterns or, or doing some traditional Vietnamese painting. The hotel, as I mentioned, is the Hoi An Historic Hotel, which is a four-star hotel, uh, very centrally located. So the images on the left and the bottom right are of the hotel. And uh, it's a, a great place to spend a few nights. So we have three nights there with um, our sightseeing and the Lifestyle Foundation on one day and then a free day to do as you wish. Uh, we do have additional activities if you uh, wish to purchase additional sightseeing such as a, a, or a, a boat trip or a sunset cruise, these sorts of things on your free day or Hoi An is a great place to, to just explore on your own. Um, there's a beach nearby so um, you know to go out there and, and spend your time or what it's really famous for is shopping and tailors. Uh, people go there with, with magazines such as Vogue and they, they ask, ask these tailors to make up um, suits and, and um, jackets and pants and all sorts of different things and, and they come out looking almost identical to what's in the magazine. So it's a great place to, to spend some time and, and do that. We then spend a night in Hue. Um, so Hue is, was an ancient capital of Vietnam. Hundreds of years ago, uh, the emperors ruled from Hue, and they've built some amazing structures, uh, such as the imperial city uh, that's based on uh, the Forbidden City in Beijing. This, uh, it's an immense structure that covers uh, many. We take a walk through the imperial city and see all the, the great architecture and hear all these amazing stories. Um, we then take a cyclo downtown and jump on board a boat and travel up, up the river. Hue is located on the Perfume River. We take the boat up river, one of the, the traditional dragon boats to the Tien Mu Pagoda, which you can see in the image here, and uh, explore the, the, the temple before uh, retiring for the night and having an imperial dinner dressing up in traditional costume. We stay at the best Western Indochine Palace, which I mentioned before. It's a four and a half star hotel located centrally. Uh, in Hue, so again, an easy walk to wherever you're going to go. We then fly down to Ho Chi Minh City, spending two nights in Minh City, which is also called Saigon. So Saigon is really the capital of Vietnam. It's, it's a great blend of, of modern and traditional. Uh, as you can see in the image on the right, there are skyscrapers sit next to French colonial buildings which sit next to traditional markets and uh, bustling laneways. So when we get there we, we do a sightseeing tour of all, all the main areas of, of Saigon including Reunification Palace which is the, the main area where uh, the Vietnam War ended, the, the tanks busted through the gates and that was where the final showdown of the Vietnam War was. Um, Old traditional buildings such as Notre Dame Cathedral and, and Saigon Post Office that you can see in the images there, um, as well as the main street, Dong Khoi Street, which is the central area, um, uh, as well as the War Remnants Museum, which shows you some um, incredible remnants from the, the famous war. Stay at the Grand Hotel, which is located on Dong Khoi Street, which is the uh, the most central area you can possibly get in Vietnam. So you walk out your door and, and everything is within arm's reach. It's an old French colonial hotel, uh, being traditionally kept, as you can see from the image on the bottom right hand side, that's, uh, we have the deluxe rooms there, which is, is the image there. 
And uh, it's one of the most famous hotels in Saigon, so uh, a fantastic place to stay. Uh, your invited experience is going out to the Coochie Tunnels and, and meeting a Vietnam veteran to help you through and help you understand the, uh, the Coochie Tunnels. We then travel on board the Mekong Navigator up the Mekong River and get to know the Mekong River and Delta. Uh, I've explained this already, what, you, what you're going to see and expect from the Mekong. Uh, but as I said, it's, it's um, the heart of Vietnam and Cambodia. And it's a, an area that really supports a predominantly agricultural and water-based life. So you're going to get a lot of insights into very local and traditional life there. Visiting some amazing uh, temples and um, palaces, local markets, floating markets, uh, meeting the locals, and that sort of thing. So a great, um, a great way to get to know life in Vietnam and Cambodia. Uh, CM Reap. So this is the last stop on our itinerary. We spend two nights in CM Reap. As I mentioned, we we um, disembark the Mekong Navigator and transfer up to CM Reap. And I'm sure everyone knows and is familiar with Angkor Wat and the temples surrounding um, the area. It covers about a 60 kilometer area. There, there are temples dotted throughout the region that, that large. And they're known as collectively, but the, the image on the, the bottom of the screen there is Angkor Wat, which is the, the Angkor Temple, built by the Khmers and uh, are, are an amazing structure. The, the detail and the enormity of, of these temples are incredible and they've been so well preserved. Um, so we spend the day there exploring all the different temples there from Angkor Wat to Ta Prom to the Bayon and the Terrace of the Elephants and the Terrace of the Lepakin. So there, each one offers something different. Um, you know, the Ta Prom has all the, uh, the vegetation growing over it and the Bayon has um, all the, the huge faces as you can see. So um, something different and something uh, unique to explore throughout the visit of, of CM Reap. We stay two nights in the Shintamani Hotel. Uh, as I said before, this is a four and a half to five star resort located in CM Reap. So the three images on the left side of your screen here are the Shintamani Resort. And then on the final night as a farewell, we go and see the Far Age Circus, which is a, an amazing performing arts spectacle uh, with these these youth that have been brought off the streets to um, to train and be trained in, in performing arts. Uh, it's a great way to finish. So that covers all the areas that we visit throughout Vietnam and Cambodia and just allows you to see what you would, would um, like to do yourselves and how you could tailor your itinerary. So now I'll just very quickly run through the rest of our itineraries that we offer so that you can see um, what might suit your tastes. So this is the 16-day highlights of Vietnam and Cambodia and Mekong Cruise. So basically it visits um, the north in, with Hanoi and Ha Long Bay and here we spend two nights instead of one bay and then we fly straight down to Ho Chi Minh City. So we don't see Hue and Hoi An, we just fly straight down to, to Saigon before doing the cruise and finishing in CM Reap. Alternatively, if you're more after uh, a cruise-based itinerary, we have this one, it's the 12-day Mekong Discoverer Cruise, where we have two nights in Ho Chi Minh City and two nights in CM Reap at the end, with the cruise, the seven-night cruise in the middle. Or if you're just after getting in and doing the cruise, we have that also. So just arriving into Ho Chi Minh City and transferring straight to your cruise and then transferring straight out of CM Reap after the cruise. It's the eight day magnificent Mekong cruise. Alternatively, if you're after an itinerary setting, then this is the one, the 10 day best of Vietnam. So it's the land portion, so the two nights in Hanoi going over to Ha Long Bay, then down to central Vietnam with Hoi An and Hue before finishing with the two nights in Ho Chi Minh City. So a variety of choice for um, all different types of travelers. 
Okay, the last couple of things that I'm going to cover are our extra sightseeing program called Discover More. So I did mention before there is some free time in a couple of areas. Uh, so in Hoi An, Ho Chi Minh City and Siem Reap, we offer additional sightseeing. Uh, there is free time for you so you can spend that as you wish. But if you would like to do something a little bit extra, like for example in Siem Reap, we go out and visit some of the outer lying temples or in Saigon we have um, different tours such as art tours or um, market tours and these sorts. Of things. Um, we offer Discover More. Um, it allows you to tailor your holiday and uh, do something that wouldn't, we wouldn't usually include in an itinerary that doesn't appeal to everyone but uh, may appeal to, to different people. Things such as a cooking class in Hoi An, uh, as I mentioned the art tour in Saigon, um, a sunset boat cruise in Hoi An or visiting some of the more different and spectacular outer lying temples in Siem Reap. We also have extensions and stopovers. So right at the beginning of this presentation, I've mentioned uh, we have Sapa and Luang Prabang extensions and sort of located those on the map for you. We also have a Singapore stopover if you're flying with Singapore Airlines. Sapa is the hill tribe area, so the ethnic minority area in the very north of Vietnam. Um, it's surrounded by mountains. It's very green and fertile. And there's some really amazing markets and very colorfully dressed people and uh, a very different part of Vietnam. Otherwise Luang Prabang up in Laos, a very, uh, a very traditional and relaxed town that is a UNESCO World Heritage Town set in, in amongst the jungle with some amazing um, temples and, and caves and ceremonies um, that you can see there. We also feature a Singapore stopover if you're flying with Singapore Airlines. We offer private transfers breakfast daily included, porterage at the hotel and some nights at the Park Regis Hotel which is in a great location on Clark Quay. Um, so one of the best locations in Singapore. Um, there are other packages around that um, have seating coach transfers so you have to get dropped off at all different hotels. They don't include breakfast or porterage so we make sure that our Singapore stopover is all inclusive. Now finally we have our early bird offers, obviously something that's going to be of interest to everyone. On our longer tours, so the 16 and the 19 day tours, we include free flights from Australia. So that's departing from Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane and Perth. Alternatively if you do any of the other three tours, so the 8, 10 and 12 day tours, we have a companion flow free, so it's a buy one get one free airfare. And in this case, if you're a solo traveller, if you're travelling by yourself, you do still receive 50% off your airfare and taxes. Both of these uh, fly deals include taxes. We also offer special business class airfares if you're wanting to upgrade your Singapore Airlines. All of these deals are with Singapore Airlines, so uh, award-winning airline, one of the best in the world, flying from Australia, from your gateway city via Singapore into your um, start city in Vietnam. The deals are provided, don't have them um, for on, on every seat, so get in quick if you want to get them. Um, so availability until sold out and you can combine these with your early payment discounts. So we also have uh, a deal where if you pay, book and pay in full up to 12 months in advance, you can get um, also additional significant savings. Now to thank you all for attending today, we have our special webinar discount which is just available to you people attending this webinar. You can save an additional hundred dollars per person if you book and deposit within 14 days and this is valid on the cruise tours that are 16 days or longer. These can also be combined with the early birds and the Evergreen Explorer welcome home vouchers. So uh, a special thank you for watching and listening today. Uh, where can I visit your local travel agency, your Evergreen Expert Agency? So we, we have a number of partners who know our itineraries and our brochures better than anyone else and they're our Evergreen Experts. So you can um, contact us and we can put you in touch with one of those. Otherwise your local Hello World Agency. 
alternatively give us a call or drop by our website or email us on the info at evergreentours.com address. So that basically covers it for today. Um, thank you very much for, for listening and hopefully it's given you an idea of who we are, uh, what we offer as a, a tour company and what you're going to see and do if you choose to travel with Evergreen Tours throughout Southeast Asia. Now there were a few questions uh, given to us before we started the, the webinar, so I'll just run through those quickly in case I haven't covered them all. Uh, uh, um, if there's activities all the time or, or are there, is there a bit of free time? Uh, as mentioned, there are activities on most of the days. There is some free time in Hoi An, Ho Chi Minh City and in Siem Reap, um, half a day in, in Ho Chi Minh City and Siem Reap and a full day in, in Hoi An. But we have our Discover More activities if you want to uh, fill that time in as well. Otherwise, your tour director is there on hand to give you suggestions on what to do. Question on when's the best time to go or the best time to travel. This is always a very tricky question when looking at this part of the world. The, the general answer to this, uh, most people would say the best time to travel is between October and March. Our peak season is really October and November is what we'd say and the reason of that is, is the weather. Um, Southeast Asia experiences two monsoons, which is a raining season. One comes up from the, sorry, the southwest uh, in the middle of the year, which is a traditional monsoon period for, uh, for Asia. And then one comes from northeast at the end of the year. So you're going to probably experience some, some rain and cloud no matter what time of year you travel. Uh, but it generally throughout most of the country, it's a little bit drier um, towards the end, of, the end and the beginning of the year. That said, uh, the middle of the year when uh, the traditional monsoon is around, quietens things down so you get uh, more sites and attractions to yourself. There are less other travellers around. And it also takes the sting off the heat when, when the monsoon comes through, which is generally a downpour in the afternoon. It just um, cools things down a little bit. So it's actually not a bad time to travel. Um, what other questions? There are, what are the prices and the added benefits? Well, the prices depend on the departure date, um, depending on which tour you choose, uh, depending on what suits your tastes, and also um, there is seasonality for each departure date. So that's um, up to each individual, so you can get in touch with us if you want to discuss any options on, on when to travel or which itinerary suits you best. Uh, vaccinations. I believe there are vaccinations recommended, but um, it's best to consult your doctor about that. That's, um, I can't really give you any advice about that. Um, are there visas required? Uh, yes, there are visas required for both destinations. Uh, Vietnam, you need to apply before you depart. So uh, apply either through your travel agent through us or with the Vietnamese consulate. And Cambodia, you do an e-visa online. So again, either your travel agent or we can help you with that, or just do it yourself online. Um, the best place is on the Mekong River. I think of that throughout the presentation. And is it better to run in a group tour or individually? It's a matter of personal opinion. Obviously, we feel it's best to go in a group because you have an expert on hand, a tour director on hand to give you all the insights. You, it means that you have a seamless flow. You don't have to think about what you're doing and where you're going. You don't need to find out how to get places or think about schedules or anything like that. Everything's organized for you and taken care of. You're not having to put your hand in your pocket all the time. Uh, everything's paid for. You don't need to think about how much should I tip or who should I tip. It's all included. So there are certain advantages to traveling um, as a part of a group and that's the way we recommend it but obviously that's a personal choice for everyone. The final question has been about um, solo deals for Asia. Yes, there currently are. Uh, good question and good timing. We have a deal book on the eight-day magnificent Mekong cruise in a signature or prestige suite and there is no single supplement or no single surcharge to be paid. 
It is available on limited departures. It's on our August departure in 2016 or any of our three departures in 2017. The code of that is EVSOL007. That's EVSOL007 if you're interested in that deal. So that covers all the questions. Uh, if you have anything else that you particularly would like to know, feel free to get in touch with us um, on that email that I mentioned before, info at evergreentours.com and uh, we'll be more than happy to answer any other questions. So I very much appreciate your time. Hopefully it's given you a lot of insight into the region and our company and we really look forward to welcoming you on board. Thank you and goodbye.